Dunkelflaute, the quiet darkness. A period in which little or no energy can be generated with wind and solar power. I'm in the process of investigating what the best way is for the Netherlands to move towards a climate neutral 2050. Most Dutch parties would like to see nuclear energy be part of this. To my surprise, the second largest party, the Green Party, wants to do it without nuclear energy. Today I'm diving into their solution, which is to get as much energy as possible from electricity, and to get this electricity from wind turbines and solar panels, and when the sun does not shine and the wind does not blow, to then go to batteries and green hydrogen. How doable is their solution, in terms of money, time and convenience? You are watching Indecisive, the nuclear energy debate. How doable is the energy plan of the Dutch Green Party? In my last video I talked about and gave a rough estimate for what would need to happen in the Netherlands for them to get all of their energy from just wind turbines, solar panels and batteries. Long story short, for long periods without sun and wind, this would get very expensive very quickly. So let's see if green hydrogen could make the plan more doable. The smallest atom is the hydrogen atom. Two such atoms can create a bond with each other. Many of these together in standard conditions creates a gas, which we refer to as hydrogen gas. This gas is quite special, as when you let it come together with oxygen, there's a chemical reaction which gives off energy. Take 30 grams of hydrogen molecules and 240 grams of oxygen molecules, together they turn into water, and this reaction gives off enough energy to do your laundry in your washing machine. All you need for this reaction is oxygen and hydrogen. Sounds easy enough. Oxygen is just floating around in the air. And the hydrogen atom is only the most abundant chemical substance in the entire universe. But it is not so easy unfortunately, because this little atom likes to bond with other atoms. So pure hydrogen gas is rare in nature. When we talk about green hydrogen, we refer to hydrogen that is produced by electrolysis of water using renewable electricity, basically reversing this chemical reaction. And indeed, just like we got energy out with the initial reaction, when we reverse it, it needs energy to be put in, in order for the reaction to happen. This is why hydrogen is a way to store your energy. When you have too much electricity at some point, you use the surplus energy for this reaction, and then when you need it again, you just let your hydrogen react with oxygen and use the energy that comes from that. As you might have noticed, nowhere in the process is there any mention of any of the not desired greenhouse gases. So you see why people like this solution? There are some caveats though. In this video, I won't dive into all these issues and nuances. Instead, I would like to simplify reality and try to give a rough estimate for what would need to happen for the Netherlands to produce all their energy from wind, solar, batteries and green hydrogen. To make this estimate, I'm going to make an assumption. April 23rd, 2023, the Netherlands. The current wind turbines and solar panels provided more electricity than was used. In my last video, I calculated the Netherlands would need about 14 times the current wind and solar energy to get all energy from these sources. So, with this huge upscale, these events of producing more energy than needed will become quite frequent. The assumption I'm therefore going to make is that we can use the surplus energy to charge the batteries and create green hydrogen as often as is needed. There is one problem though, the efficiency. By this I mean how much percent of the initial energy can actually be used when we first store the energy in the form of green hydrogen. There are a lot of different sources on this, we will choose 25% for our calculation. According to a paper from the Technical University Delft in the Netherlands, it was found that almost all periods tagged as Dunkelflaute events, with a length of more than 24 hours, in Europe happens mainly in November, December and January. They say there is on average a total of 50 to 100 hours of such events in each of these months. So we'll go with the worst case, which is 300 hours in all three months. 
This is 12.5 days, which is about 3.4% of the year. So 3.4% of the energy that is consumed needs to go through this inefficient route, namely green hydrogen. In my last video, we calculated it would cost about 636 billion euros in investment costs to provide the Netherlands with sufficient energy if periods without sun and wind last a maximum of one day. When we add this new update, slightly more energy is needed due to the inefficiency. So we'd need more wind turbines and solar panels than in the original calculation. This number of the investment costs becomes 670 billion euros. Our goal was to provide the Netherlands for at least 8 days in stored energy. Because Dunkelflaute events of that duration occurs about once a decade. So the only thing we are left to add is how much it costs to build green hydrogen plants that can provide the Netherlands for 7 days because one day is already covered by the batteries. To estimate this price, I'll look at a current project and its expected investment costs. Holland Hydrogen One is estimated to cost 684 million euros. The only problem is that this is not made for selling. They plan to use all the produced hydrogen to decarbonize the production at Shell's Pernis refinery. So storage cost and the cost of connecting it to the energy system will be different in the case of providing the Netherlands with energy. But for this video, let's just take this number. They say they are planning to produce 60,000 kilograms of hydrogen per day. This can be converted into about two gigawatt hours of energy capacity. In seven days, the Netherlands consumes about 10,000 gigawatt hours. If we give it about 50 days to recharge for the Dunkelflaute, we're talking about 100 of these projects, which would cost about 68 billion euros. So now we have a grand total of my very rough estimate in which I've dismissed many nuances and details. The grand total of the investment cost for the Netherlands to get 100% of their energy out of wind, solar, batteries and green hydrogen is 738 billion euros, which indeed is much cheaper than achieving the same result without green hydrogen, which I estimated to be close to 2 trillion euros in investment costs. If prices continue to get cheaper, processes more efficient, and you'd continue to be able to sell your produced energy, then given my estimations, I believe the following would not be implausible. If a company would invest 20 billion euros a year in investment cost for the production of wind, solar, batteries, and green hydrogen, and they reinvest all the profit they make, and energy demand stays relatively similar, then they might be able to get to this climate neutral the Netherlands in 2050, after which they will get more rich than you can imagine by selling incredible amounts of energy. After a while, they'll take over other energy producers in the Netherlands, gaining a monopoly on energy in combination with making the Netherlands completely dependent on their infrastructure, increasing the price as they wish, making them even more unimaginably rich, spreading to other countries like a virus until they rule the entire planet. Anyway, I've just presented a rough estimate for what needs to be done if the Dutch Green Party gets to choose. What they like about wind, solar batteries and green hydrogen is that 1. It can keep the Dutch government neutral in the energy market as there are private companies who take up these projects. The same cannot currently be said about nuclear. And 2. The build of each of these projects takes at most a few years which means the Netherlands can immediately and more easily monitor progress and see if they're on the right track. They have energy goals for 2030, 2035 and 2040. If you'd only focus on these goals, it makes sense they wouldn't want to invest in nuclear. So now the big question remains, what about nuclear? 